So what we are asking for is that when a country says, I'm going to reduce, say it very clearly. How much are you going to reduce domestically? without any kind of loopholes, without any kind of common market, without any kind of offsets. That is the only way to have a clear negotiation that is transparent for people. Has the U.S. attitude changed at all? I mean, after Copenhagen, you spoke out fiercely against it. President Morales did as well. The United States penalized you by millions of dollars, saying if you wouldn't sign on to the Copenhagen Accord. Is that right? Yeah. They, Did you sign on? No, of course not. I mean, for, for they, 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 they penalized us with an aid of $3 million, because they said we didn't support the Copenhagen Accord, and we said, you can keep your money. But uh, we, we are not fighting for, for a couple of, of, of coins. We are, we are fighting for life. Why? How does this affect Bolivia? Well, we have glaciers, for example, in Bolivia. Until now, we have lost one-third of our glaciers. If this situation continues in Bolivia, we're going to lose the vast majority of our glaciers. All our mountains will be naked. And you know the consequences that, uh, for that in relation to water, for agriculture, for, for, for drinking water for the populations there. and. Uh, this is a situation where we cannot uh, hide uh, ourselves. Uh, we think that there has to be a very responsible action. And coming to the first part of your question, I would say that the situation in the United States has begun to move backwards. What I feel is that when this uh, proposal of, of law was withdrawn from the Senate, then everybody began to say, oh— When the energy bill. Yeah. Then mm, the United States is, is not even going to go, go move forward, move beyond what they have already said they were going to do, but instead they can move backwards. That is the perception that I feel in, 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 from other developed countries. So. If the United States is not going to do too much, then the others say, why should I do it? And, and then comes a discussion of, well, if I do more and the United States does so less, then I will be in a difficult situation to compete with the products of the United States, because I will have to invest more in, in clean energy. And so, at the end, what happens is we're in a very difficult situation. It's interesting. I remember when uh, Bolivia held the uh, climate change conference, um, the foreign minister of Ecuador said, in response to Ecuador also being penalized millions for not signing on to the Copenhagen Accord, the U.S. cutting off money to uh, Ecuador, they said they would give that money to the United States, an equivalent amount of money, I think it was like $2 million, if the U.S. would sign on to the Kyoto Treaty. Um, but I wanted to go back to a few weeks ago, we had Maude Barlow on, the former uh, water representative at the United Nations. Um, the day that the resolution was passed that you, Ambassador Pablo Salon of Bolivia, had put forward around the issue of water and sanitation. This is an excerpt of what you had to say at the U.N. At the global level, approximately one out of every eight people do not have drinking water. In just one day, more than 200 million hours of the time used by women is spent collecting and transporting water for their homes. The lack of sanitation is even worse because it affects 2.6 billion people, which represents 40 percent of the global population. According to the report of the World Health Organization and of UNICEF of 2009, which is titled Diarrhea, Why Children Are Dying and What We Can Do, Every day, 24,000 children die in developing countries due to causes that can be prevented, such as diarrhea, which is caused by contaminated water. This means that a child dies every three and a half seconds. One, two, three. As they say in my village, the time is now. Bolivia's ambassador to the United Nations, Pablo Salon, he's our guest today in studio. 
the first resolution on this issue? Explain. Well, in the UN, we have recognized the, the, the right to food, the human right to education, the right uh, to work, the, the right to social security. But for 60 years, we haven't recognized the human right to water. So it's the first time in history that the UN recognizes the human right to water and sanitation. Who supported it and who didn't? We had 42 countries that co-sponsored the resolution, that they, uh, 122 countries voted in favor, and uh, 42 countries abstained. Abstained? Abstained. So that means that 75 percent of the countries that were present voted in favor, and 25 percent abstained. Nobody voted against, but many made speeches expressing that they didn't uh, support the resolution, but that they were not going to vote against. And the U.S. being one of the abstainers? Yes, the U.S. was one, one of them. Why? <laughs> what would it bind them to? What are the forces that say no to a people's right to water? Uh, I always have